Hello, this is uh, Gary Garretts, and this is a 30 minute long demo on how to draw the portrait in charcoal. This is a simple little outlay of how I lay, lay out my pencils. Right? The hard ones are on the left, uh, medium ones, more sort of blocking in value, and then I move towards my darker ones for shadows and for the hair. Now, usually I don't pay attention to the manufacturer's rating on the pencils because it, every manufacturer has a different combination of materials they use. So I just try them out myself and see how it comes out. Uh, these are chamois. It's a powder embedded cloth. I use it to soften up edges and lines. Uh, then we move down to the erasers I use, which I can carve and turn into different shapes and cut. And there's my erasers, a heart softer kneaded eraser and a harder edged one and an exacto knife to uh, cut the, them with. You can use this methodology for photographs or for the live model. Uh, it's very pliable, very, very fluid. Uh, so what I'm doing first, I've sped up the uh, drawing process and I'm blocking in the general face of it looking at the proportions and the measurements and where the features are. If you want to get more on this process, I have a, another video on YouTube that uh, deals with uh, planes and measurements and where all of the features fit together on the face. But what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm sort of shortening that process up, finding the cheekbones, moving into blocking out the eyes, looking at the shapes of things, where they're located, comparing the distances, even the planes, which are the bigger shape forms on the head and bracketing in the features you can see I'm shortening up some lengthening up others testing out my thought pattern axis lines making sure everything's symmetrical everything where it should be if you have one form on one direction one point on one side of the face it generally locks together with the other side I'm switching off pencils, using probably a harder pencil it looks like. I do that frequently. So again, you can see it's not so much uh, drawing the features, it's blocking everything in, making sure it's secure. See, again, shorten up, and then I'm angle siding off the corners of the nose. There's the cheekbones, there's the Riley shape on the top of the head. See, I'm writing myself a little note there. Perhaps you can see now I'm a little bit more confident about where objects are located on the face, where the points are. The features are kind of getting a little bit more locked in. I've used the uh, shape of the hair to sort of bracket in the face, work along with the cheekbones. Now I'm getting into a little bit more planes and angle sights on the eyes. You can see I'm sort of knocking in the forehead. And just a very, very general sort of block in. I don't want to get too specific because I know that there's going to be cross hatching and shading and charcoal. So now comes in the facial features. Now comes the facial hair. So see, I'm again, not drawn hair, just shape. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move out of the whole head make that comparison and now we're going to pull into the eyes a little bit more and what you'll see is again I'm not really rounding a lot of the edges out I'm just mapping everything out using the darker lines on the planes where the shadows are see sort of blocking the pupil and the iris in not going really overly heavy with the line so far. Looking at my distances, using the shape design, you know, like drawing the pupil and the iris in, actually even putting the eyeball in a little. And increasing my line, change my proportions, and looking at the corner of the nose in comparison to the eye. 
And now moving down into the nose. Didn't like that. There we go. There's the sort of ball on the nose. You can see the planes for where it attaches to the cheekbone. Taking in on taking my measurements, coordinating everything together, building up the line a little bit more. See, I don't concentrate really on one area. I'm sort of all over the map. Pull out a little bit, make sure everything kind of works together. Still got to work at the proportions. Again, not overly outlining the features. You're just building up the bottom of the mouth. There's where the beard, the beard, the mustache sort of comes in. See, even the, the mustache, I'm shortening it up, getting rid of that schmutz there, pulling in the side of the beard, and pulling out. See now it all relates together. As I build this up, again, planes, little angles, moving into the eyes. I'm going to make another pass at the eyes before I put the soft fine charcoal in. So again, see, I just there's a little bit more of the bags there. There's, so again, sort of building up the, if you look at the shadow line, it goes right apart across the top of the eyes, not so much of a dark line on the bottom. Building up the cheekbones a bit. Remember, all those lines are going to be like little barriers or soft walls that this vine charcoal is going to go up against. Here's a comparison between the two. And now here's the vine charcoal. It's very soft charcoal, either willow or vine, two different kinds of charcoal. Long sticks. It's very soft stuff. It does have an edge to it though. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, if you notice the photograph, I'm going to use a shadow pattern. And now I'm going to use the safest part, which is the dark hair, so I can see how dark the material works. And you find a pattern, find a rhythm. That's what this is about. It's not so much detail. What you're doing is you're seeing how all the different shadow forms work together, whether they're a little see around the edges of the eyes, that's a little bit sharper. See, I pick up another piece of vine charcoal. It's got more of an edge to it. Pull in a close-up. Sort of paint it in. Paint to the shapes, though, and to the different value ranges. So while I'm doing this close-up, what I'm doing is you can see there's different densities of that vine charcoal. Sometimes it's like right along the pit of the eyes. It gets really dark. I really jump on the charcoal. On other areas up in the forehead where the light's a little bit more secondary, I leave it a little bit more open. Now I'm punching in the facial hair. I should say the shapes of the facial hair. There's a comparison. And you can see with that pencil, what I'm doing is I'm showing you where that all fits together. Notice there's more space in the paper. Paper shows through just because it's not as thick as the shadow side, which is the right hand side. So again, it's a rhythm. It's not so much about finish or just trying to, it looks really clunky and chunky at this point, but that's okay because you know it's going to lead somewhere. Right now, you're just trying to gauge the different densities in a little bit of the mouth. I'm not settling in on one area, making mistakes all over the place. I know they're mistakes. I'm not concerned with fixing them. Again, it's the whole picture I'm worried about. Now at this point, I bring the pencil into it. Now the pencil, what it does, is that it's a little bit more rough and tumble, a little bit more space between the marks. What it does is, so it shows sort of a secondary kind of plane, sort of a mid-tone, sort of even kind of sews some areas together. Sort of almost suggests the texture of the skin a little bit more. So at this point, I pick up that chamois. It's a cloth with uh, embedded with charcoal. 
And what I start to do is soften up a lot of the edges of the planes where the vine charcoal is. And if you notice, I'm not just scrubbing it, I'm actually sculpting with it. I'm turning the cloth around to match the forms of the head. And it goes over the charcoal pencil, softens that up. Take that side, since that side faces towards the light, diffuse that a little. Keep that edge on the cheek, edge on the... Okay, so you're not just spreading it all over the place. You're being really, really strategic with how you place it. Now I'm about to use that process on the eyes. Again, repositioning it, and now using the planes, and you can see how I'm being very, very judicious with the marks. Just slowly taking little areas out, to watered it into a point. Now I know one of the things I'm doing is I'm softening this up, knowing that I'm going to be going over the top of it with cross hatching later. With the, with the pencil. You can see I'm not obliterating a lot of the lines. I'm going to use them later. See, so soften that edge there a little bit where the cheekbone is, where the light is. Again, if you want to look at there's a nice planar demo I did on YouTube. You can Google up my name and take a look at it there. If you go to that YouTube video, it'll explain the planar breakdown and how to use it in relationship to lights and darks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a close-up of the eyes, bring you in there, and then show you how these, that soft value, again, describes the way the light's hitting the forms. Now what I'm going to do is sort of jostle in how the charcoal pencil will define those forms, define the planes, along with the lighting. So this will give it more texture, more sense of the tactile quality of the skin. Again, now I'm really starting to come in and figure out how the features attach to everything else. Now you're seeing this as a close-up, but I'm making sure that all the pieces fit to the whole drawing. Just moving around stuff, experimenting, kind of seeing where the planes are. Again, you'll see where the darker lines most of the time are underneath where the light doesn't hit. I'm being very careful about keeping the upper portions of the cheeks, forehead, upper part of the nose in light. So I'm not filling it up with a bunch of gray mess. A little bit of age there. Little bags on Tommy Lee Jones there. So again, I'm going that plane across that gives a little texture of the skin. Now I'm punching in the shadows coming off the nose and on the cheek, on the side of the eye. Building up now, starting to build up the uh, eyebrows a little bit more. But see the shadow shapes on the on the eyes, on all over the face. See nothing's really getting a real detailed finish at this point. I'm just seeing the way everything sort of works together. So at this point, I'm moving down into the mouth area. Around the fascia here are the beard and the mustache. And the tricky part here is I have to combine the texture of the skin, the facial hair, the cast shadow coming off the nose, and even the skin, that texture of the skin that I have to get in there. And then still organize all that light that's there. So now what I'm doing is I'm moving into the mouth. You can see that little horizontal line there. There's the corner of the mouth. I just established a corner of the uh, mustache. Now there's the plane of the beard. Now so right, right there was just sort of like more the direction of the stroke goes down the side of the head. Pulling back out to see the way that works with everything. So I don't want the beard to become detached from the face. I want it to become part of the face. So I'm not just drawing a bunch of hair. I'm doing a lot of suggestion. So I'm just building everything up, getting ready to start to sort of 
detail or give more information on the features. Just shortening up the nose a little bit. Pull back in. So now there's texture of the beard. A little bit more hair. I'm not quite certain. There's a little bit of the skin there. A little bit of the plane. There's a cat. There's a little shadow that comes underneath the chin there. Attach the beard to it. So if you notice, I don't I actually attach the hair to the skin. And I'm using one of those dark pencils, a softer pencil at this point. to get more of a dark indication. There's a cast shadow underneath the chin onto the neck. You can see I sort of rounded the strokes out a little bit more. There's a plane underneath the nose. Notice how it kind of gets just diffuses right into the mustache. Okay, so I don't just concentrate and draw or detail out one section. I make sure it works in relationship to the whole form. So now I get the eraser out. I want to pull a little bit more of that age, a little bit more of that white hair. And bump up my lights again. See, so I'm going back in top of the nose, side of the cheeks. Here's my stick eraser there that I really like. Now I'm even taking that chamois and softening some areas up. Gives it nice sort of a nice warm bounce light. See, so I'm pulling that all together. So that's not as light as a highlight. So I'm making sure I keep my lights, that variation of Difference light, lights and darks clear. I know I'm going to go a little bit more high contrast at this point because I know I'm going to be putting strokes and marks over the top of it. So you have to really pre plan on a lot of this stuff and not be just in the moment. You have to kind of think ahead and at the same time not freak out about where it's going. You'll be able to fix it, it'll be fine. So just keep that rhythm, keep that flow. See, and you can see how high contrast it is. I'm trying to get that secondary bounce light or ambient light in the cheeks, knowing I'm going to go over the top of it and soften it. See, if I make it flat, then I can put strokes over the top of it, and the strokes are more pronounced. So there's my beard. And there's that soft pencil again. Okay. So you notice they go to like sort of a diagonal. So all the strokes, even the beard, sculpt it. It's not straight up and down. It goes around the features. As I build up that those planes on the nose, you can see the same thing. I think a very important thing to kind of keep in mind at this point is even though I'm running back and forth all over the drawing, still not quite certain where it's going to go, where it's been, is that I'm still keeping it unified. There's none of these shapes that are really breaking out away from everything else. It's all about keeping that whole part of the head together, sometimes softening stuff out, sometimes making a little bit more high contrast. As I move down to the chin, I'm going to start to cut this out with an eraser. Leave sort of a, try to use it the hairs first. See, that doesn't really work. So then I'm going to come back in and just plow out this section where there's a little bit more bounce light, maybe a little age. It makes it sort of a flat form, and then I can put the texture of the beard over the top of it. It makes for a little nice backdrop, but it still weaves into the rest of the hair of the beard. And the shape, the shape and form of the beard. In, in general, that sort of rounded ball form.
Okay, now, now we move back to the eyes. And you might be able to see that I'm leaving this to like one of the last parts of the drawing. To, so again, I get everything kind of organized and moved together. I don't want to just make these sets of eyes here separate from the rest of the portrait. So again, you can see I'm jumping up the values on it, throwing in the eyebrows a little bit more, even suggesting hair. Look at the shadow shapes on the, on the eyes. So again, the eyelids, nothing breaks out from the rest of it. Those shadow shapes, those triangular shadow shapes with the round forms on the end. Everything works in concert. There's dark lines, but there's not really a lot of hardcore high contrast lines. And let's face it, one of the things I am doing right now is I'm moving back and forth and back and forth between different problem solving devices. I'm not quite certain where this is ultimately going to lead, right? So I'm trying a little soft there, soften this up, soften that up, a race on the top, race on the side. You'll see that I'm going to, I'll see I soften that area up. It doesn't quite work out. Now it's a little bit too dark, so I come back to the eraser. See if I can punch some more highlights into it, even give the texture of the skin so it's a little rougher. You can see those little crosshatch strokes I put in there. But he does have bags and he does have heavy duty sculpting on the upper part of his face, but you can see I'm back there trying different things all the way from cross hatching marks that are separate to now I'm taking a kneaded eraser and kind of unifying everything else, seeing that that was just a little bit too hard. And again, I'm softening it up because here we go. I'm going to be putting pencil lines over the top of it to suggest a little bit more of a rougher complexion and a little bit more age. There's no way I'm going to be drawing like this if I was drawing a five-year-old child. So now at this point, we'll move out a little bit, kind of show you the way the eyes and the nose, a little bit of the mouth all fits together. And you can see, see, again, I, I bounce back and forth. A little bit of the eyes, a little bit of forehead. And maybe jump on a little bit more of the cheeks a little bit, accentuate those. There, lower eyelid, you know, a little bit of that deep shadow from the socket. And it, then remove the sponge and junk that I got on top of that thing. It gets in the way. See, now I'm kind of filling in the mid-tone range of the values a little bit more. I don't want it to be too high contrast or too much lights and darks. I want those mid-tones in. If I get too concentrated and get too worried about something, sometimes I'll move off to the facial hair just as a kind of visual vacation. So I don't have to worry about it so much. I can try out some of my ideas. Get a little bit of a rest. See how punch up that. I look at the cheeks and see how much I can chump those up. Yeah, get rid of it a little bit. Oh, more of the junk removed. Must be getting close because I'm punching the darks up. I usually save the darks until the last. Same thing with the highlights. See, I'm jumping the highlights up a little. You also might notice that I jump back on the pencil. I hold the pencil back farther on the shaft so I can, when I draw something, I can see where that point does. A little white pencil in there for the whites of the eyes. Cheat that out a little bit. Sort of works and it sort of doesn't. Darken them up. Get the pupil and iris a little. So, one thing you may notice that I really am jumping on the forehead here, really being pretty aggressive with that pencil. And then I realize. A little too aggressive. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and soften it a little bit. But sometimes you got to experiment to see if it works or not. So I take that chamois and just rub that chamois in there. It's still got some of the marks, but it softens it up to a better glow. And there's that vine charcoal again. Just soften that up a little bit so you lose your edge. Still got those marks in there, sort of at the right at the edges of things. So one thing you might notice is I put a piece of paper down as a mask to lean my hand up against. I don't want to put my hand on the side of the drawing and smear it by it moving back and forth. So I use this little platform and then take that chamois and again I'm looking and see whether it's too hard or too soft and even the chamois wouldn't help so I'm taking that and taking that kneaded eraser very softly sculpting out what I don't want in there. I'm not plowing into it. Dealing with the planes, I want that forehead to be a little bit more on the rounded side, not totally flat, especially at the edges. You can see I'm modulating my tone and building the tone up. Sort of frankly scared about how everything all fits together, so you can see I use more of the side of the pencil on that, so it gives a soft plane rather than a hard-edged cross-hatching. Then that doesn't work, and soften it again. I'm trying to get that visual flow, if you notice where my finger was moving. So again, a little bit, if I put those cross-hatching marks in it, it means the texture of the skin's a little rougher. Yep, down into the sock, inside of the sockets of the eyes. See, now I'm pouncing on that a little bit more. You notice how my pencil moves around, my eye moves around from one side to the other side. Again, the symmetricality, looking how one side fits in the other. You know, see the way that I don't just rub the eraser in, I actually sculpt it and move it in rounded, around rounded edges. There's a flat plane, there's a rounded plane. There's some features. Okay, so again, I just don't draw one thing, I bounce back and forth. So now as we come into the home stretch of the drawing, we're going to block. The, I'm using the vine charcoal to block the hair in. Right? Usually I do this as the drawing progresses sooner, but for the demonstration it makes much more sense since I was working on the forehead to wait. Again, block it in pretty flat. Then I blocked. I erase the highlights back into it. I move, move all the schmudge off of it. Back in, now I reinforce the value. So I'm using that super soft pencil, especially for this darker hair. Pull out a little bit, and then come across it. So you notice again, I don't go straight up and down, I come at an angle because the angle of the head's going backwards in space. I don't want to flatten out. If I put vertical lines on everything, it's just going to flatten out. There's more texture for the hair. There's the hair being literally implanted into the forehead. So it doesn't look like a bad toupee. You don't want a big pancake on top, black pancake on top of that head. See a little bit of errant hairs there around the edge, make some interest. Blocking my values in since it's in the dark side of the head, where the shadow is. And moving back, see some. You can see on a sense how abstract you can make it too. Last thing you want to do is have a bowl of spaghetti on top of his head. Okay, so here's where you're going to watch me make a big mistake and then fix it. So I really overdo the ear. The ear all of a sudden, because you put such a dark line around, it comes out more towards the front of the head. So it flattens the face out. And I realized that, so I thought, oh no. And so instead of erasing it, I just took the chamois, knocked it back. Put a little bit of hair overlap in the ear and take an eraser and just punch a little bit of that light hitting the top of the forms. Then go over to the other side to see if there is even an ear on the other side. Now what I'm doing now is just doing, getting the whole thing to work compositionally. Looking at the visual flow, see all the pieces 
connect together, softening up some things. Come back to the racer, hit the highlights, which always hits that skin on the forehead, over the top of the eyebrows, probably the top of the nose, top of the mouth. And here's a comparison. Okay, now if you remember what I did at the beginning of the drawing with that fine charcoal, left that sort of halo of charcoal over the edge of it, you can see what it does. It makes for a real nice way of combining the head and the background together atmospherically so they combine together and there's much more of a sense of depth. You can see the ears been knocked back. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking one of those hard pencils again. We're going back to the beginning to a certain extent. And I'm just taking and adding some light connecting lines to it. And as we move into the eyes, you can see all the soft and hard lines, the value, the cross hatching working together. A lot of suggestion. But then when we pull back, we can see it all works together in relationship to the whole form, the entire head, and then comes in the photographic reference. And there's a few little things that you could probably tweak, but it's close. And the techniques there and the process is there. So as we come to the end of the video here, I'm not really drawing as much as showing you the pathway, the visual pathway, that the intent was that the strokes and marks run through the head and over the forms. Of course, sometimes I just can't help but noodle around on a little bit more. Kind of reinforce some edges, throw a little bit more texture on it. You can kind of see I'm using my pinky as a platform to draw rather than letting my hand sit on the side of the page. Again, thanks for watching this and going through all of this. And there are a couple of more tutorials on YouTube, some planar stuff and structural stuff. And then here's a few little of my drawings at the end, life-size charcoal drawings to end out the program.